Hi, I'm Cameron Mackay. I'm a filmmaker, music producer, and also work in the Scottish environmental sector. And in all these different areas of work, one of the main things that I do is use film, music, and storytelling to connect people and the public and across a huge, diverse range of audiences with the natural world in every way we can. I really believe that using the traditional arts and culture that we have at our fingertips to create really inspiring pieces of media that can make people really value nature and want to protect it is one of the best things that we can do to fight climate change. And I'm really excited to see how this kind of work can be replicated and done loads more in the lead up to COP26. You know, when we're talking about the climate crisis and we're thinking about what the emergency is today, there's no one thing I think we can really point a finger at and say that's it. There are so many different emergencies that are happening simultaneously just now. And when we talk about climate change, that really is just the tip of the iceberg. But for me, one of the things that I happen to work a lot on is an emergency connected to traditional culture. In Scotland, we have such an incredibly diverse range of cultures and languages that are spoken across the country, you know, from Gaelic to Doric to Scots. And all these connect to real amazing cultural practices that happened around Scotland just now and have happened for thousands of years. But because these are all so deeply connected to the natural landscape, as the environment changes, so does this practice of culture. You know, the Highlands and Islands of Scotland are a real production line of different types of cultural practice, from song, storytelling, ballads, music, dance, art, everything. So we need to really make sure that as we protect the environment, we're also protecting the cultures, because these cultures are the very thing that can connect us with the natural world in a really emotive, personal way. So utilising these things, I think, is one of the best tools that Scottish people have in our arsenal to tackle the climate crisis today. And when you're talking about traditional culture, I think there's such an exciting opportunity to collaborate, and not just in Scotland, but internationally. When you look internationally, particularly connected to Celtic culture, France is such a huge country that comes to mind. We have such a deep connection between the two countries culturally that goes back thousands of years and no doubt will extend thousands of years into the future. So moving towards COP26, I really hope that on the cultural side of things, Scotland and France and other countries internationally can really unite using these particular cultural ties. When looking at one particular solution that we can take now and use to build towards a green, sustainable future, I don't know if this is an endpoint solution, but it's something that I think is a crucial building block, and that's increasing the diversity of people at the table and the people making decisions. And I think there's been great work done on this so far, but I'm really excited to see how much COP26 can inspire more and more people to come together to create work, to create artwork, to campaign, to protest, and to submit solutions to the negotiations themselves that can help us work towards a sustainable future. And I think step one is making the conversations as inclusive and welcoming and as few barriers to connect with as possible. This is starting to happen and I think the cultural sector has a huge role to play in increasing the accessibility of these conversations. So fingers crossed as we lead up to COP we can see more and more different people from different backgrounds coming and joining the conversation. If I had to close my eyes and imagine what a green, sustainable, inclusive future could look like for Scotland and Glasgow, one of the first things that I'd see is community hubs developing, where people that live in the same postcode, the same street, can come together to grow food, to travel and to work together to reduce not only our carbon footprint, but also to have multiple benefits that you can see. Take growing food locally, for example. Having more allotments and more local foods will increase the accessibility of food, it will reduce the food costs, it will probably have a lot healthier food, but more than that, we're going to be outside, we're going to be working with soil in the natural world, which we know boosts mental health. We'll be working together, which will reduce isolation. And you know, forget climate change for a minute, and working towards the solutions will not only support us in you know, reducing our carbon emissions, but I think this could also work towards so many multiple benefits, like you know, increasing our mental health, increasing our physical health, working together more as a community, reducing the cost of everyday life, and ultimately making things a lot more efficient in the worlds that we live in. So I'm really excited to see how this future could play out. Now thinking about a first step that we can all take to move towards this idea of a positive green future, I think it's investing in culture. In Scotland we have an incredibly diverse culture that spans thousands of years into the past and has so many incredible cultural traditions to draw on. that are not only brilliant for bringing communities together, but are also fantastic for connecting us with the natural world. 
you know, take the Gaelic culture and Gaelic song and arts in Scotland. It has such an amazing wealth of knowledge about nature. And if we can build things on this that help us move towards reducing our carbon emissions in the future, I think it's a great way to bring people together. But not just in Scotland, but around the world, in France and other countries that have this incredible connection to traditional cultures um, that spans, you know, geographical boundaries and spans back to thousands of years that, you know, could really bring us together and help make one unified force to tackle this issue just now. Now looking towards the actual COP26 conference this year, it definitely looks uncertain. And although there's a huge amount of incredibly important negotiations that are going to take place, to me what's actually really exciting is everything else that's going on, the fringe activities for COP. You know, we're expecting over 100,000 delegates coming to Glasgow from around the world. But overall, I'm just so excited to see what Glasgow can deliver to COP26. It's such a warm, welcoming city that throughout its history has strived for social justice in so many different moments. So to think of the international delegation of activists, campaigners, artists, indigenous peoples and representatives of the most diverse range of people coming to the city, I'm so excited to see what the end product of all of that cultural collaboration will be.